defend our zone until the time runs out. Yeah, he goes on a bit. Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And you are checking out my first ever game of Frontline on my Plays for Free account. So as you all know, I, I started a second account last year to try and get back into touch what it's like to play this game truly for free. And then recently I undertook a, a challenge from you guys, my community, which was instigated by Kevin Wang to do the the French Wheeled Marathon. And during the journey, I thought, what kind of vehicle do I really want to go for first at tier eight? And I thought, Pantera, why wouldn't I want to get an auto-loading Italian medium tank? Um, and then I realized I've got an auto-reloading Italian medium tank. I've also got an EBR 75. Holy moly, that's like the, the match made in heaven for having front line, right? So, free to play front line, although with a lot of time invested, let's check it out and see what we're able to achieve. And this is the very first game I've played in, so I don't have all of the luxuries that you might um, be accustomed to, having Inspire, having Max Rank Engineering. I've literally got level 1 engineering throughout. Alright, so one of the things that I've been really enjoying about playing Frontline this week, we're now in episode 2, is that I figured out, holy moly, this game mode is actually really fun with friends. And yesterday I was playing with my good buddies Phil and M4, who are also moderators inside my ch Twitch channel, if you've seen them around. And we are in three Italian medium tanks, and look at this synergy right now. Linking up, we're advancing through the front, we shut down... The, the Progetto on the enemy team, and we're literally talking through our reloads there, and we get out quite a tricky situation. But look at that, the momentum and the synergy that we have as a, as a three-person group. Now, I've been uh, making my plays in Frontline as just a solo player, and I've just realized if you, you do get, if you do manage to get some coordination going in front lines with a group of two or three, you can be absolutely hugely influential in, in swaying the battle in your team's favor, or at least um, uh, winning fronts, at least. Now, of course, you can't win all fronts. It's not like a regular battle of World of Tanks when you can lock down uh, the cap circle and that's it for the enemy team, right? That's not the case here. You're going to have to try and win on all three fronts and unless you split your platoon up, that's just not going to be possible unless your team is exceptional on the other front and you try to target the weakest front. Now, of course, how do I recommend uh, targeting the weakest front? Well, if you press your tab key, you can actually see how many enemy tanks there are on the front. And as we just went in and we absolutely obliterated the enemy team, they're probably not going to hang around here for very long. And as you can see, slowly but surely, the players who have died on the enemy team are leaving this front. At least a couple of them have already, or maybe a couple of players have joined our front. I'm not 100% certain. But eventually, more and more players are going to leave. And the worst thing that you can probably do is just to, to leave your whole platoon on the same front when there's, there's nothing left to do. That, that's really not a very good idea. So what I tell Phil and M4 right now is, look, this front is dead. There's, there's nothing we can really add to it. Some of the players on the enemy team don't have any tanks that they can even spawn in. And I want to also play quite cautiously because obviously I've only got two tier 8 vehicles on this account. I, I managed to pick up a rental of the T-44 Frontline Edition. And I can't believe that if you purchase that thing even with 240,000 credits to rent it for a week, that you don't even get it with a 100% crew. It comes with a 75% crew. That's just absolutely awful. It's not even a reward tank, I don't think, although I'm going to check later on today. And so you can't even use your Soviet medium tank crews from maybe your T-43 or your T-3485 or or any of the vehicles inside it as well. So it's, it's crazy, in my opinion, why Wargaming are kind of preventing people from being able to get into Frontline and being comfortable. I'm not saying that it has to be a premium tank, the T-44 T Frontline edition but why not at least make it a reward vehicle so that you can use your crews in it without penalty and having to play around with a 75 percent crew all right so this is why i love the pantera it's actually got really good accuracy at long range and while you don't really want to go too deep in the magazine because you the more that you fire the more that you lower your damage per minute and your reload gets longer and longer the deeper you go into to the magazine it's just absolutely awesome to be able to dump in 720 damage on your opponents oh my word i always get nervous going over these bridges i think they're my bane and so as you can see the front that we left we were outnumbering the enemy and they're not going to push through into the c cap and so me phil and m4 have decided to to move to b instead to try and get a flanking position out on our opponents and we've already lowered the health of the scorpion now hopefully we can get behind this big glut of tanks there and that's really what I recommend that you do if you're playing in a platoon with your friends, is it's not enough to just sit on one front. If you've managed to, to decimate the enemy and they've gone to the other fronts because they don't want to spawn again to be killed by you, then definitely look to move to other fronts to be able to stop them from losing out as well. 
Because obviously the goal is to try and defend all three fronts, right? And you can't do that by just remaining on one. All right, so this T-92 is going... Watch this. This is actually quite funny. So we fire one blind. I thought he was going to go forwards. He didn't. I'm thinking about firing the second blind, but I realized, no, I kind of want to keep my DPM. You'll see that I wait for the shell to actually go back in, something you have to do in your Italian auto reloaders if you want to maintain uh, effective damage on your opponents. Because if you fire with 0.1 seconds left on the reload, you you that, that shell doesn't actually get loaded into the tank and yet you fire the, the backup one. And so you can lose literally an entire reload if you fire a fraction of a second too early. One thing that's a bit annoying for me as well, I'm not sure if any of you have figured this out, is that the audio tells of the actual, you can hear the, the shell being loaded into the breach, are just a little too early. Obviously they make sense because you'd, the shell would go in and you'd hear the friction between the two surfaces of the shell and the, the gun barrel. But, or, or the breach, but it's just it's just so annoying if you try and depend on that to know, okay, now it's time to fire, and then you find out you fire too early, so don't make that mistake. All right, now this is just this is just the best situation to find yourself in in front line, right? Defending a cap circle and having multiple opponents to shoot at. But I didn't think this IS-4 was going to be going for me. Now I fire one at him, and I'm going to try and fire a second in, but he's angled his armor enough to be able to bounce my shot. Luckily, Phil and M4 have arrived, and one of them are inspiring. And when you get in the Inspire buff inside World of Tanks for a platoon, that's just phenomenal, especially an Italian auto-reloading platoon. You, you, you're now kind of having really good single-target DPM if you choose to use that, and it doesn't even feel so bad going deeper into the magazine. One thing as well that a lot of people don't think about Inspire is that it increases your view range massively. And so that actually allows you to be able to spot your opponents at very decent distances, especially if you're playing French wheeled light tanks. Now everybody knows that the, the problem with the French wheeled light tanks is they can't use binoculars, and while they can use coated optics, at least with regards to the Lynx and the EBR-75 that you will be playing in Frontline, their base view range is, I think, 310. And no matter how hard you try, even if you're willing to use premium consumables and you've got a, a seven skill crew with situation awareness, brothers in arms and recon, you're still not going to get that view range up above about 400. And so that Inspire can be make huge plays for French wheeled light tanks, allowing you to, when you get into the open, for example, make a huge sweeping play against your opponents and light up a lot of their tanks. And then, of course, you're going to be able to reload faster, and even in that Inspire can make you more accurate in a, in a Lorraine 40T or an AMX 5100, for example. Use it just before you're about to unload a, a full magazine because you've caught somebody out in the open. You're going to be more accurate, and then afterwards, because your loader has increased crew skill and your commander's been boosted up a little bit, sometimes the radio operator is actually the loader on your French auto-loading tanks, and then you're going to be able to reload faster to be able to go after them. Now you'll notice that I came round that corner so confidently against this Samoa SM and that is because he made a huge mistake. Don't do what he did. And that is that he didn't hold down his right mouse button when he turned his tank around. It's one of the most stupid things that you can do to look behind you but not lock your turret in place. Because here's the thing, unless somebody's been counting your shells when you're playing in an auto loader, then they're not really going to know for sure if you've got another one, right? But it's a pretty telltale sign that somebody is not interested in shooting you if they don't hold their right mouse button down, they turn their camera around and their turret st starts to traverse away from you, right? Yeah, that, that's not really going to work out too well, is it? And so I saw that and then so I felt confident that we can probably get the Samoa and be able to push him. All right, so we die. But again, me, Phil, and M4 are actually doing a great job of just locking down all the fronts. We stopped the enemies from pushing into E there, but once we left C, they actually managed to take C. So I've decided to, to respawn away from my buds, because unfortunately I was the only one to die there. You can see they're still alive in their Pantera and their Progetto, respectively. And I'm going to play the EBR. Now, while I do have brothers in arms on this vehicle, I don't even think that I have six cents at the moment. Oh, no, wait a minute. Maybe I do, because I think I might have a female commander. I'm not 100% certain. We'll find out in a second. Uh, but my crew are not exceptionally skilled. I don't even have maximum concealment on this vehicle. I think it's about 50%. And if I just zoom in on the minimap here, take a look at how bad our view range is in this vehicle. This is a, a tier 8 light tank. It probably is packing about... 370, maybe th maybe 360 meters view range right now. That's absolutely horrific. And if you're not spotting for yourself, 
then that means that you're only getting 50% of the experience against your opponents. And when you're trying to, to push up the ranks and you, you want to be that first captain or you want to be the major or you want to be the general, well, it's not going to work out too well for you. Now we put one into the back of that Pantera there, sending him on fire. And what I want to do is basically just try and keep harassing. Now I did play the Lynx quite a lot inside the, the first episode of Frontline last month. And while I thought the, the Lynx is a, a great vehicle with a nice single shot 90mm gun and very impressive high explosive rounds with 90mm of penetration and 320 alpha damage, I have to admit, the EBR-75 for me, it just feels like the superior vehicle. Being able to go backwards faster and having this two round magazine just suits the bursty combat. You see how we can put in two shots against the SU before he realizes and he starts to aim at us. With the, the Lynx, for example, you could only put one shot in and there's no hope in hell with the bad reload that the vehicle has and the poor DPM that you're going to be able to, to sit there for long enough to be able to put the second in without them hitting you in return or at least having a chance to hit you. But being able to unload, two 75mm shells within one and a half seconds of each other on this tank just feels absolutely incredible. And the fact that the alpha damage is 175 means that you're still doing 350 damage with that two round burst. That's very, very, very brutal. Also, the high explosive rounds on this vehicle, while they're not quite as good as the Lynx, they're still packing 260 damage and the fact that you can fire two of them means that you have a 520 high explosive burst against lightly armoured targets. But although you do have 75mm of penetration, which is worse than the 90mm that the Lynx has. One word of advice, and actually I'm going to bring up Wargaming's website for this because they just they just actually released a fantastic article about Frontline. And I want to talk to you about this with regards to the, the high explosive rounds as well that you're going to be using. Is that if you're targeting the back of the enemy objectives, let me show you. There are actually weak points on the back of the gun turrets that Wargaming is showing here. Let me move this over a little bit so you can still see the combat. This yellow door hatch behind the objective is actually 70 millimeters thick. And now, while I was able to successfully go through that with my Lynx's high explosive rounds, very reliably because it's 90 millimeters of penetration, I actually found that the EBR-75 and its 75 millimeters of high explosive penetration was insufficient for going through the door. And just today, I learned somebody on the stream was telling me, oh, why don't you shoot the vents instead? And they're completely right. Apparently, there are a ventilation shafts here, here, and here on the back of these uh, emplacement turrets that you can shoot that only have 25 millimeters of, of armor. And so you're easily going to be able to penetrate those even with very low caliber high explosive rounds, even on something like a, a Progetto or in any of your generic medium tanks. Maybe you're playing in a Pershing. Just load HE and shoot at those vents. But of course, you're going to have to be able to sit still and aim accurately in close proximity to them to be able to penetrate. That will allow you to be able to pick up tons of damage on the back of the enemy objectives. All right, so let's see how this battle is going. Well, I've linked up finally with M4 again. I think M4 just died for the first time. He is on eight kills right now. Phil is on seven, and I am only on two. Although that is two kills with uh, 3,600, sorry, 3,500 damage and 2,000 spotting. So maybe I've just not been very good at kill securing. All right, so I let M4 know that I, I really don't want to die right now, so I'm actually going to pull back and try and flank around and get towards the, uh, the repair depot. I can't really help him against the, the IS-3 and all the heavy tanks that are pushing in there. When, you're, when, I, when I don't possibly have my, my Pantera to load back into at this moment, you've really got to be very, very careful. I had to play so much safer on my free-to-play account than I, than I could on my pay-to-win account or my, my main account, whatever you want to be calling it. Yeah, pay to win account. Oh gosh, we we'll go there. Yeah, okay, whatever. Let's not focus on it. But it is when you think about it. But I tell you what, you guys judge whether this this free to play account is really holding me back as much as I thought. Um, and as long as you're you you invest your time wisely into the right vehicles and you still know about how to to play, you can be very very successful. And in fact, it looks like we might be one of the first captains on the team, along with my buds M4 and Phil. Good stuff. So this is actually a wonderful moment of the game when we are picking up a lot of spotting. Look at that, we were lighting up all of those targets and I've got a gun line here that are nailing them for me. And spotting inside World of Tanks is, is blooming useful. If you can manage to, to get into a good position, then you're still going to be getting 50% of the experience that the player... Well, you're going to be getting the same experience as the person who deals the damage. Because, of course, if you're spotting, you're getting half of the, the experience that they would have been getting if they're not spotting the target themselves. 
And so while you're probably going to have to get something like, well, obviously you have to get like 10,000 spotting for the equivalent of 5,000 damage on targets that you can see, it, it can be quite a lot easier to pick up spotting against multiple targets if you've got a big gun line. All right, so the enemy team are now going to be pushing into the ECAP circle. And this is without a doubt the most important position to be in inside front line. I'm not talking about this tiny little location, although I think it's very good for defending the ECAP over here. It's more about interrupting enemy tanks as they enter the cap circle and the easiest way for you to be able to go and successfully get higher ranks inside frontline is to defend and attack the cap circles. Now how does the, the decapping work inside frontline? Well the person who actually gets the kill is the person who gets all of the uh, all of the, the base reset points. However, if you damage somebody, it actually blocks them for, depending on what your engineering level is, uh, a set number of time. That, and you will be getting all of the, the decap points that that person was unable to achieve because you blocked their ability to cap. And as you can see, we've just pretty much got halfway through the captain rank with that tiny little bit of damage there against the type the WZ and the Emil. But it's because we were doing the base defense points that we were really able to be successful. All right, so this was one of my favorite moments in the battle. And that's because, um, well, that's because Phil, so I was just wondering if it was Phil or was M4 inside the, the EBR, but I realized M4 doesn't quite have an EBR. And even though I offered to get him one, he says he doesn't want one. Talk about gift horse, right, ladies and gents. But Phil is lighting up these projectos and is allowing me to engage at long range. And remember, in a vehicle like this, it's completely awkward to be able to shoot your opponents because when your view range is so bad and a Progetto's is so, so long, that means that if you can see them, they are very much likely to be able to see you. And so if you can work with one of your allies, of course, if they don't fire, uh, if you, if, if sorry, if, if, if they're spotting, and they're not firing, so they maintain their camo, and the other one of you just shoots, then at a longer range, that means you can actually engage people inside these vehicles without the chance of them returning their rounds. All right, so we're a few shells away from Major in this game now, and while we don't have the most kills with M4 out killing me by a ratio of two to one and Phil nearly the same, I, I'm starting to feel like, is there a tiny chance that we might actually be able to get General in our first ever game of Frontline on a completely free-to-play account that I haven't spent a penny on? And without having all of the advantages of having Inspire, having full-level engineering, I literally only have level 1 engineering right now. And it's more about a, the culmination of... Of course, if this had actually been my, my first game of Frontline, I wouldn't stand a chance. I'd probably be driving around going, Oh God, what is this? What am I meant to do? Oh, shall I go over there? Where shall I go next? But I've played probably about 100 battles of Frontline now. Um, but to be able to take what I've learned and then apply it to this, this complete free-to-play account, although I am using a vehicle which, unless you had 60 hours to be able to grind for, you would have had to have spent a little bit of money on. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to portray the tips and tricks that I've learned that all of you will then be able to, to replicate to hopefully be able to get some decent ranks as well. And there we go, Major in this battle. And it looks like there's at least four minutes left on him. All right, so I'm going to try and track this Lorraine. And while I do do a little bit of tracking damage to the Lorraine, I'm unable to be able to do as much as I need to be able to take the guy's track off. And then I did not realize, but there's a Progetto and a T-54 gunning me right now. And I end up against another Progetto. And I'm just hoping that maybe I can escape this death trap that I've got myself into. And oh, shut down. Well, uh, a bit of poor tunnel vision there by me. I didn't realize what kind of a tricky situation I was going to get myself into. And the fact that I stopped and engaged that Lorraine. I was going for those tracking shots. But that, that, was, that was the first real poor play of this front line. And yeah, while you can get lucky and sometimes evade all of that damage inside your EBR. Yeah, sometimes you are going to get shut down. But nevertheless, I get to spawn in the Pantera. All right, so let's talk about this stage of the game. When you are trying to defend your, your objectives. And the enemy team have managed to pretty much push through all of the fronts. Well, at this stage, it's all about damage limitation. There's no way for you to stop them from taking all of the objectives. Or shall I say at least one or two of them. But remember, you only have to defend three. They need to kill three, so as long as you protect three, and they can have two for all of you care, then you're still going to be able to win the battle. And so the enemy have actually made a fantastic play to push through and take four, which actually is right in the middle. Usually they're going to start from the flanks and take one or five and then push their way in. But the fact that they've taken four so aggressively now leaves us wide open. 
we have to defend at least two, right? And we have to defend three. There's no way we're going to be able to defend one, so it's all about focusing on what, what you can actually defend. One is gone, so I wanted to make sure that I made my way over towards two. Three is very hard for the enemy to be able to get their hands on, because three is actually on top of a hill. And for them to be able to get up there, it takes them a while, but more importantly, it's a lot easier to defend a, a hilltop against an enemy advance. Although in World of Tanks, with gun depression and going hold down with the turrets, doesn't really quite work out like that when I think about it. I still feel like three is one of the safest objectives. And so that meant that I had to really focus on two. And now what I'm going to do is get behind this Kanav and I'm going to aim for the back of the tank. I'm going to track him so if my team damage him, we'll get a few extra points. And there you go. Wham, bam, Kanav and taken down. Nearly up to 10,000 damage here, although it certainly has been a very long battle. All right. Now we've got two pretty much completely safe, although it looks like it is taking a little bit of damage, maybe from a little bit of uh, collateral fire. But now what we can hopefully do is just stop the enemy team from advancing from one till two. But what I realize at this moment is that while while I'm enjoying this, this moment, look how many tanks we have. This is ridiculous, right? We don't need to be here. And you can see it clicks in my mind at that time. Don't just go into a blob. You can see that all of these little lemmings are chasing after this M4190 as if they're, they're bees flocking towards some pollen. Obviously, bees are the ones that make the honey. They're, they're not going to flock towards honey. Anyway, just WZ132. Hopefully, we get to ram him, but not quite. I'm a little bit sad about that because I'm halfway through Major and we've got four minutes left now to get towards General. But with only two obje well, three objectives left now, it's going to be a close, uh, close run if we're going to be able to take this one down. So anyway, don't be a Muppet. Don't stay on a flank that's already run. The fact that all of those guys over there are doing what they're doing on this location is just a waste of time. Obviously, the enemies are pushing in here. They're coming in from the ECAP, which they just took, and they're going to make their way towards 3 and 5. And so if we want to win this battle, we have to defend both 3 and 5, and hopefully we're going to be able to stop the enemy's advance. So I'm telling Phil, I'm telling M4, let's go get together and see if we can do this, buds. And I quickly realized just how many tanks are advancing at us. It's pretty much about 10 vehicles on their way up towards the hill. And yeah, while the Pantera is a great vehicle, it doesn't really have the DPM to be able to vanquish everybody very, very quickly. All right, so unfortunately, we're not going to get anything done if we miss our first shot, right? And actually, do you see how I fire a little too early there? And so I actually interrupt the reload, and so I don't have two shells loaded. Oh, that's a bit horrific. Okay, anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's focus on this LT-432. And you'll notice that I don't actually fire because I want to fully load my gun and start my damage rotation. In a vehicle like this, if you fire out all of your shells, then you're never going to be able to stop multiple opponents from taking you on. You have to fire them one by one to maximize your DPM. Although, if you have an opportunity to secure a kill, do it. It's not the end of the world if you fire the second. And to be honest, in the Pantera, unlike the Progetto, it's actually got a very good reload for its third. So we've got an IS-3A approaching M4 from behind. So I decide to push through the front. And I'm going to give myself as long as I can to be able to reload. But oh no, the enemies have actually taken the objective. But the game isn't ending. And so I decide to ram the Progetto. And look how close we are to the general rank. Come on, baby. Yes. The final little bit of a ram against the Progetto secures the general rank for myself, which was the first on my team, and I could not have been happier. Now, why is the game going on? You can see I raised my gun in victory. The, the very first game that I play in <laughs> on my place for free account, I do get general, but of course, I could not have even got close to doing this without my good buddies Phil and M4. But you're wondering, why did the game go on so long after the objectives have been killed? And that's because there's, uh, although I've talked about this on the channel before, there's something that maybe a few of you didn't know. And that is that every time a vehicle is killed after a base is capped, or all the objectives are killed as it works in the same way, it actually extends the duration of the game by five seconds. And so if you can keep linking in kills, that the game could go on, not indefinitely, but for as long as there are still vehicles to be able to take out. So quite a performance from our platoon here, and that means that we get some kind of special medal for when you get over 20 kills between you. We actually managed to pick up 26 this battle. And while the gross earnings are 133,000 for this battle, after all the repairs, we only received 85,000 credits. Of course, without a premium account, but if we had been using one, that would be 151. That's, that's pretty much double the 
the amount of credits that you would receive, because obviously it's not any cheaper to fire ammunition and repair tanks without a premium account. And so your base costs are the same with or without, which means that your, your net profit will be substantially higher than the 50% raw credit income. One thing I was quite happy with, however, is 5,256 experience is very decent. This battle lasted just under half an hour, and even if I'd been playing pretty well, it would have taken me at least an hour to be able to get that without a premium account by playing in the random queue. But of course, uh, all of that really comes down to the fact that we were able to secure the general rank with the ram at the end, which pretty much boosts the amount of experience we get by about 100%. And so I really want to highlight several things with this video. Number one, yeah, it's perfectly possible to dominate the game without having all of the advantages that you can get inside Frontline. You don't have to have five crew skills. You don't have to be slinging premium rounds with premium consumables. You, you can even play standard tech tree vehicles. And while having tanks like the Progetto or the EBR-75 or, or the Lorraine will definitely be an advantage, they're by no means a necessity. Through active defense of the cap circles, putting yourself on the right fronts where there are the most enemy tanks to be able to shut down, reading the map and making preemptive play rather than reactive play it will allow you to to rack up lots of experience which will give you increased rewards so my recommendations for free to play vehicles to be able to get your hands on to dominate in frontline would be number one pantera the pantera with an auto reloader is just so incredibly flexible it can play the single shot tank if the situation allows it to but also just unload its magazine if the situation demands it and you absolutely have to just get that 700 damage out and you're going to have about 30 seconds to be able to reload. It's phenomenal for that. Next up, I really think that the Lynx is a great vehicle. And while I don't think it's as strong as the EBR-75, because the EBR-75 can go slightly faster backwards, and it has that kind of bursty autoloader, the Lynx, with careful use of its high explosive rounds with 90 millimeters of penetration, 320 alpha damage, can be absolutely devastating. And if you can get yourself engineering on a vehicle like that, you can quite often push an enemy cap circle or even defend your own by simply being in it and making a rush around enemy vehicles and interrupting them with your high explosive rounds, which will give you huge amounts of ranks. On the other hand, if French wheeled light tanks aren't your thing, you really can't go wrong with something like a 5100. The Amex 5100 is all about planning the perfect ambush. And what more do you need than 1,800? hundred damage in a single magazine that's enough to kill an entire vehicle inside the cap circle or hopefully multiple vehicles that started on reduced hit points well-rounded medium tanks wise you really can't go wrong with a t44 since wargaming have buffed it well again i think the t44 100 will be the superior vehicle and make you loads more credits as there's nothing wrong with a standard t44 on the other hand if heavy tanks are more your thing i'd probably look to pick up an is3 or i don't know maybe i'm crazy but I, I think a t32 could actually be really good in front line now why do i think a t 32 could be quite good because that turret with its 10 degrees of gun depression it's going to be able to bounce everything and sure it doesn't have the best penetration in the game with i think just around about 200 standard rounds it's still going to be enough for most of the vehicles you're going to be shooting at and loads of people are playing glass cannon tanks like progettos scorpions su-130 pms that you're easily going to be able to pick them apart and they're going to really struggle if you manage to use that turret well and finally tank destroyer wise well it's probably just about getting the biggest gun and the best mobility really so i think that maybe the the su-100 or should i say 101 could be an absolute stellar vehicle for the front line. And finally, I just want to round off by saying just how much fun it was to play in a platoon inside the front line game mode. Playing with Phil and M4, well, we definitely have years of practice playing together and so we were quickly able to develop synergy there's something about being able to respawn and then be able to play together or if one of you dies that it doesn't really matter because they can just respawn and then come back or go and work a different front and then you can rendezvous later on to be able to achieve some epic stuff it was just wonderful one of my least favorite things in world of tanks is when you die a little bit early and then you have to to sit there and kind of watch your friends maybe play for possibly up to 10 minutes if they're having a, a really good long drawn out battle just it's just didn't quite work out. I like the idea of being able to go back in and help them. And being able to do that in front line, ugh, massive thumbs up. And so if you haven't tried platooning or haven't even tried the front line game mode yet, I thoroughly recommend it. Go and get up to a couple of friends, platoon up, and you'll be surprised about how impactful you can be when you're working together, which can almost completely take away that feeling of just uselessness that your, your team is not able to hold a front. <laughs> or alternatively, push the enemy camp circle. 
Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, long one today, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully this was useful for you, or maybe you just enjoyed the sport of, of playing my first ever game on the Plays for Free account and getting a ram kill to get general at the end. Although I guess it, we ended up in a defeat either way. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, make sure you give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments if you've got anything to add to, to what I've said. Have I missed out any vehicles that you would recommend for a free-to-play player? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.